when I was 8 years old, I looked something like that, and I had a friend. And that friend drew beautifully. I could not understand how someone so young could draw so well. And I envied her a lot, because I couldn't. And so, as many people do, I forgot about drawing, and I marked it off the list of the things that I could do in life. But a few years passed, and I became interested in animation. I thought it would be cool to become an animator, like the guys at Pixar or DreamWorks. So I went on Google, I typed in how to learn animation, and I spent a few months moving shapes around my screen. And that was cool. But then I read somewhere that if you want to become a better animator, then you should learn to draw. I actually was like, learn to draw? I always wanted to do that. So I went on Google, I typed in how to learn drawing, and I found a drawing guide that I completed after a month. I kept on practicing and practicing. I even signed up for drawing classes. After four months, I was able to draw like that. Then I met a magician, and he was like, do you want to see a card trick? And I was like, sure, I love card tricks. And you know, he did the trick, 30 seconds passed, and he was like, is this your card? And it was. It actually was my card. And I was amazed. My voice was taken away. And we just stood there like... <laughs> <laughs> and I exclaimed, how did you do that? That was amazing. And he wouldn't tell me. So I went on Google. I typed in how to do card tricks. And I spent a year learning that. After that time, I learned enough to actually approach random people on the street and show them tricks. I finally gained the skills to evoke the same sense of wonder, amazement and mystery that a stranger once provoked in me. <laughs> so that didn't work out. And I decided to learn to code. When I was little, I gamed a lot. And so I always wanted to create a game. Uh, so you know. I went on Google, I typed in how to make a game, and I spent a year watching online tutorials and developing my project. After that time, the project was finished. My game was finished. I learned a lot throughout the process, and I could show off the result to my friends. Uh, besides, well, I have to say, the game was a spectacular success. <laughs> so I finished the game last summer and uh, I was sitting on my couch watching YouTube videos and wasting time as I usually do and I stumbled upon a video made by Google it was called Abu's story and Abu was a high school student who discovered artificial intelligence and decided to use it in an, in an extracurricular project in order to classify breast tumors as malignant or benign. Malignant tumors are those that are dangerous. Benign are those that are less dangerous. So what Abu exactly wanted to do was find examples of malignant and benign breast tumors and then show them to his computer. The computer would learn to recognize them. And then, if Abu had a new tumor and he did not know whether it was malignant or benign, he could show it to the computer and the computer would tell him that. I thought to myself, if some kid my age can get one of the biggest companies in the world to make a video about him, just because he learned how to use his computer in an efficient manner. So I went on Google, I typed in how to learn machine learning, and I spent three months learning that. After that time, I found a data set on the internet with examples of malignant and benign breast tumors and I showed them to my machine learning algorithm. It learned to recognize malignant and benign breast tumors with 93% accuracy. What I'm trying to say through all of that is that you can learn things on the internet. <laughs> you may not realize this, but this is a unique opportunity. There had never been a time in history when learning was so simple. For example, if you were born a shoemaker in the medieval times, and you had a weird nose. And you decided you would like to check out what goat breeding was like. Then, firstly, you wouldn't, because you were a shoemaker in the medieval times. Secondly, 
assuming you were really, really set on learning how to breed goats, then you would need to find information on where you can find a goat breeder. Then leave your village, find companions, embark on a journey, save the widow, fight the pagans, get killed, be resurrected, slay a dragon, and that old lout with goats still wouldn't eat you because he had a weird nose. <laughs> These days, you literally go on Google, type in how to breed goats, and there's a Reddit post that tells you exactly what to learn and where. You are in a unique position to access the miracle of free education. And you may say, okay, Hugo, I get what you're saying, but I once tried to learn something on the internet, and I learned a thing, but then I didn't know what the next thing to learn was, and I didn't learn the thing I wanted to learn. And I get that. I actually had the same problem myself once. For example, when I was trying to learn to code, there were many tutorials on programming languages online, and I completed a lot of them, but still was not able to code something up myself, such as the game I wanted to create. So the question arises, how do you actually learn things on the internet? And the answer is actually pretty simple, and comes down to two steps. One, find a roadmap. Two, follow it. A roadmap is a list of the things you need to learn in order to gain a complex skill. It's also a list of places where you can find learning resources, such as articles, books, or courses. And if it sounds obvious to you, it is. When you go to school, there is an entire curriculum ready for you so that you know what to learn in order to master a subject. But on the internet, there is no curriculum. You have to find one yourself, and people forget about that. So, a good first step to finding yourself a roadmap is to Google the thing you want to learn, followed by Reddit. I have yet to find a subject for which I could not find a basic outline with this method. Try it yourself. I even began studying machine learning that exact way. If the topic you're interested in is academic or technical in its nature, then you should also look for online courses. You can use sites such as Coursera, Udemy or Udacity. Many courses are free, and some of these sites even offer financial aid if you cannot afford their fees. A third great learning resource are simply books and PDFs that you can find online. Simply googling the thing you want to learn, followed by a book, often yields great results. And if you're looking for shorter tutorials on more, let's say, miscellaneous skills, <laughs> then you should go on YouTube. You are bound to learn something along the way. And I know what you're thinking. That sounds like a lot of work, Hugo. But, surprisingly, it's not. I learned to code by spending only 30 minutes a day programming over the course of two years, and on many of these days I did absolutely nothing. The same goes for any other skill I have talked about. And if you actually use these methods and learn something new, think of all the ways you could benefit not only yourself, but also, and more importantly, other people. What you might do could have a real influence on not just your life, but on other people who benefit from your enhanced impact on the world. So, I am proposing a challenge. Think of one thing you've always wanted to learn. Then, Google how to learn it. Then, learn it. 30 minutes a day is enough. Now, the only thing you need to do is find the time. Thank you.